Right, so what we're going to do with this, once you've cut it, what we do with the 7 millimeters to get it to a, to a nice rounded shape is we cut the 7 millimeter cylinder 12 millimeters long. So from there to there, 12 millimeters. Because this is 8 millimeters, I've actually increased the length a little bit now to 13. That's just so that when you tie it in in the middle, it makes a nice round shape and you don't end up with, a, with, a, with an odd shape. If you're doing the 5 millimeters, the 5 millimeters, I cut 9 millimeters long. Okay, so once you've cut it, measured it and cut it, the manual way of rounding the eyes, you take your scissors, and I don't know what the word for this is. Is it chamfer? Yeah. Oh, there we go. And just chamfer the edges, just a little, not much. Yeah. Just break the edge. Do the same on the other side. There you go. Just break the edge. And then if you own a nail file, or your wife owns a nail file, you can use a nail file, or you can take a piece of, I found a piece of 120 grain sandpaper to actually work very nicely for this. If you take the file and you file it, in one or two directions just to break the two corners that you've now created there. This is super high density foam. This is going to be difficult. <laughs> I'm actually working up a switch here. Sometimes when you get close to, to finishing it, it also helps if you, if you pinch it and roll it a little bit. Right, and then you got to come back afterwards and just take off these small little, small little hairs and pieces that hasn't quite come off yet. Now this high density foam is difficult to shape. Let me do a piece of the lower density. I'm chickening out here. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing now. There you go. That little, all the little pieces it makes. Just clean it up a bit. And there you go, round it. Okay, now I'm going to show you the quick way of doing it. Go to the hardware shop, ask them for a pencil grinder. There's various makes of this. You don't have to get Dremel. There's a, there's a couple of makes. Now, Dremel's the most the most famous one. And then you get an aluminium oxide grinder. You'll see it's got a little recess on the top there. Um, this is a, a method. It's, a, it's actually on YouTube. If you go and how to make booby eyes, Google that. You'll see a video of Davy Davy McPhail doing exactly this with this exact same stone. Um, so I'll show you how, how that works quickly, but more importantly, I'll show you how quick it works. Okay, so there's our square shape. Now 
I'm going to try and do this. Can you guys see that? No, you can't. Try and do it here. Done. <laughs> a lot easier, a lot less trouble, guys. So, yeah, invest in a Dremel. You won't be sorry. If you want to tie movies, or, yeah, or, or, or you could just ask somebody to do it for you. I'm going to try and do this uh, 8 mil one now to see if we can round, round the eyes with this for everybody else. I just want to change this stone to one that's a little bit, one that I've sh actually shaped for bigger, larger diameter foam. Let's see how it'll work. So we can shape everybody's foam for them because otherwise it might take a while. Okay, it still makes a little bit of a corner. There we go. Okay, so we'll shape everybody's eyes for them before you guys start tying. But there you go. A lot quicker, a lot faster. Okay, so let's start with the fly. Before we start with the fly, there's something that I tie into to all of my flies, and I've brought, I think I brought enough for everybody to use. Um, it's just a little bit of a loop underneath the marabou of the tail. The reason for that is sometimes when you cast, especially when the marabou is wet, it ends up doing that. Yeah. Yeah. And then while you're retrieving, yeah, you see your you see your fly doing a pick and pay trolley on the way in, and then by the time you get your leader back, it's wound up properly. And when you lift it off the bank and you put it down, it's a mess. And then it takes you one and a half hours to sort out, and you're cranky, and you know, one thing leads to another, and eventually you sell your fishing gear. So I tie in a little bit of a little mono loop just behind. You can actually see it on this fly. Just behind, just underneath the tail. Just a little one. It just helps to push the, the marabou away from the, from the hook, keep it up a little bit and keep it out of the hook bend. And ever since I've had that, I won't say I've had no problems with it, because sometimes when the casting gets really wild, then even the mono doesn't keep it out of there. Especially when you start seeing fish rising. Because then, then you lose patience on the back cast and... Yeah, but um, I must say I've had a lot less problems with that ever since I've done that. So what is now, your breaking, breaking strain is that now? Um, I use 0 0.25. I don't like uh, 0 0.25 millimeter. I don't know what the breaking strain is. Hey, no, no, it's uh, Maxima, Maxima Ultra Green. Ultra Green. Oh, guys, you can, you can, you can. Yeah, you can buy it. cheap, cheap, cheap stuff. Don't, don't use your Stroft or your. Um, Trout Hunter or any of that, don't, don't use that gear for this. Use, use the cheapest stuff that you can find because it really, it just serves one purpose and that's keeping the marabou out of the hook bend. But 0.25 for me is, is perfect because it's not, it's not, the diameter is not that thick so that it, it creates a hell of a body on the fly, but it's still strong enough to keep, to keep the marabou out of the hook bend. Okay, so I think there should be enough here for for everyone in for a piece. Marius? Yes. I don't want to add any, any heat to your situation there. But this thing cuts out at 40 minutes. Oh, shit. Sorry, okay. man. Oh, cool. It's, well, it's not going to be... The, the longest part was talking about the fly. The tying it, it's I'm really sure. simple. So we were saying we had it last year sometime. I think Mac... Uh, Mac <laughs> it cut out. It cut out, yeah. All right. Okay, so let's start with that then. Okay, thread base. Um, I use I use 140 denier for this. It's very it's especially handy if you wanna if you wanna get get the, the thread to to form the, the the eyes nicely. If you use 70 denier thread, you're gonna run into problems. If you're trying to get it to shape the eyes and you're pulling it into the foam, the thread sometimes snaps. So use 140 denier when you're tying. You can use 
ah, any color thread really, it doesn't make such a big difference. But orange, yellow, or white works best because it does, it will stick out a little bit in front where you tie it off. Tell us about the hook, uh, This hook, I, I normally use for this fly, I'll use, uh, must I must tell them about this hook or the one that I intend to use? Yeah, what do you intend to use? The one that catches fish. Yeah. <laughs> That's the only one. Okay, the one the one that I normally use for this is a is a grip one three double one three size ten. It's a long shank uh, wet fly hook from Grip. That's the barbless one, eh? It's the barbless one. <coughs> All right. So when you get to the back here. Just pick the mona up a bit like you do with nymph tails. Just give it a couple of wraps underneath. Just let it stand up a little bit. It helps with, with keeping the marabou out. Right. Now, get to the fun part. Now, colors. There's no really a set way of doing this. I use it as a general rule of thumb. Whenever I'm tying two tones on flies, I always tie the lighter color at the bottom. Because everything in the water is normally lighter at the bottom than what it is from the top. Camouflage just works that way. Even the fish is dark from the top, light at the bottom. So I'll put the yellow at the bottom. Uh, the amount of marabou I use, I will pinch off literally as much as my fingers can handle because if you're using one color, I'll roll it over once. If I'm using two colors, it's about one and a half centimeters, there or thereabouts. Okay. Another little trick, I don't know if you guys know, if you want to tie your marabou in, I'm not really worried that much about what goes on at the back because you can always control the length by pinching it off at the back. But at the front, I want to strip off a little bit of this fluff because I want to tie it in all the way to the front. You don't want to tie it in right at the back make, because then it makes a little camel hump right there where you're tying all the materials in and then your fly ends up having a taper going forward. And I really dislike that. So... I just strip all this fluff off, so you end up with that. And that's where you tie in. Okay, now going forward, if you let go with your left hand now, it's going to be a problem. Because this, all those little pieces are going to flare up like you're tying in deer hair. So just keep your pinch on it and just give it, give it a wrap forward. Give it another wrap forward, give it another wrap forward, and it stays on top. Now, I'm not worried in about trapping it in properly now. I'm just going straight back because we're going to put in the second color now. So that's what you, that's what you want. Okay, second color, the orange, exactly the same. About one to just over a centimeter as much as I can handle with a pinch. If you if you rip off this, just just cut this off, because trying to trying to pull that off with your nails, you're going to lose nails in the process or break them. Okay, same story. Just strip a little bit of this fluff off until you get that. Trap in. Move forward. Move forward. Move forward. Okay, now. There we go. Now you can give it a little bit of tension on the thread and go all the way back to your loop. See now, see that definite split that you end up between the two colors. If you tie it in properly and it stays on top, then that's what you get. If you want it to mix, just loosen your pinch up a little bit. Start with it a little bit on the side towards you and pull it over. Then it'll then it'll mix the colours or it'll pull the one colour over the other one. Okay. I'm gonna go back a couple of wraps because I just want to tie in the uh, the wire now as well. Are we looking for time then? Eight minutes. <laughs> Okay, what does the battery look like in that case? <laughs>
Okay. Right, silver wire, guys, the reason for the silver wire is just to give a little bit of strength to the peacock hole that's not there for any other reason. It doesn't need to be visual. I literally use the thinnest stuff that you can get on the market, which is a UTC extra small in silver. Okay, so get that in. Peacock hole. Exactly the same as you would tie a Pankora Willy Bugger. It's nothing different. I take about three pieces of peacock hole. Found that to be to be ample. Okay, trap that in. Okay, now we can go forward. Okay. Now I'm going to put the eyes in. You can put the eyes in from the start as well, if you if you if you so choose to do it. I just find it easier to work with the fly without the eyes in. I tie them in as late as possible, especially when you when you start tying other patterns where you use chenille and that sort of stuff, where you've got to palmer things back. It really gets difficult if you're trying to palmer chenille over over the eyes in front. So I tie them in as late as I can. Just bear in mind that you've got to keep some space for them okay so now what I do is I keep put the foam in line with a with a with a hook point or with a with the either hook beg your pardon and then get the get the thread to the middle of the foam about there give it a very 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 soft wrap first if you give it a hard wrap it's going to dent the foam in if you try and move the thread afterwards it won't move it'll go back to the same place every time you can already see it's made a little bit of a dent there in the foam. So just give the just just basically go around it and let the thread hang and see if you're in the middle of the foam. If you're happy that you're in the middle, then give it a reasonable wrap and another loose wrap. Then you turn the eyes. And once you've turned them, you can start your figure of eight. No, 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 I've pulled it down now. When you turn it sideways, you can pull down on it. Uh, the best way to check it, when you're done giving it a couple of figure of eights, the best way to check it is to turn the, turn the vice upside down and have a look at the, at the shank of the hook. The shank will tell you whether you've tied it center or not center. If you try and look at it from the top, it always looks good from the top, but from the bottom, not so good. So then you'll see you'll see your mistakes from the bottom. If you've wrapped it in off center or skew, or whatever the case may be, take it off, put it one side, let the foam regain its memory, take another eye, start again. What, if you are happy with the position of it and you're happy with the way it's sitting, some of the guys do this. If you want to, it works really well. Just put a little bit, a little drop of super glue on the hook shank. It'll keep the eyes, it'll lock the eyes in place so that they don't turn on the shank and they don't turn sideways as well. What? Three minutes left. <laughs> okay. I didn't realize there was going to be time involved. All right, let's do the let's do the peacock hole quickly. There's nothing funny about getting peacock hole around the shank. Just when you get to the hook eyes, just pull it into the gap and then out to go around again. So you want to get it in there as deep as you can. And then take your thread in there as well. Snip it off. There we go. Okay, counter wrap. Counter wrapping your, your wire, and like I said, guys, this is just to support the peacock hole. There's no other reason. Well, in my opinion, I suppose if you want to. Right now, the third and final thing. This hook shank is a little bit, a little bit shorter than what I would have liked to use. Um, you'll see on the flies that I brought with the shank that or the hook that I like is. Uh, it's typically a little bit longer, but we're going to work with it. 
Okay, I just like to put a little color of orange zonker in here. It's not a necessity. It's just the fly like that to me almost look unfinished. Two minutes, thanks, Liv. <laughs> <laughs> Got live updates coming Almost from the back there. <laughs> okay, guys, if you're struggling with Zonko, especially if you're going to split thread it like that, two minutes over. Oh. I'm saying just tie. Oh, okay. Okay, all right. I'm going to finish the pattern, then I'll, I'll give you the tips afterwards. Okay, split threading Zonko shouldn't be a new thing either. You don't want to massively long piece of zonker in you and you don't want a lot either typically about two centimeters that much yeah. if you can see it that's perfect and the length of the zonker the, the length of the tips just under a centimeter is ample okay flattened thread Once or twice. <laughs> right. Now you got do you do the eyes do a lot of the work here, but you you must palmer it back a little bit just to help most of the fibers to go backwards before you start wrapping it. And then do it after every wrap as well. And once again, when you're wrapping it, take it into the I almost said cleavage now. Into the <laughs> take it take it right into the gap here we go mm. and now you can bring your thread forward and whip finish. Very good. Ten, nine, <laughs> seven, six. There you go. Brilliant. So we go. And then, of course, a little bit of trimming afterwards. Never a bad thing. There you go. Oh, almost one thing. This is always the last thing I do. Length of the length of this, whatever you like on your woolly bugger. Some guys like their woolly buggers to be short because they're scared of getting short strikes from the fish. Other guys like it to be long. I like it to be typically about one and a half times the shank of the hook that I'm using. And as you guys know, you pinch marabou, you don't cut it. And there you go. That's the fly. Very good, Italy. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice.